Parallax settings can be combined with sticky columns to create advanced sticky parallax effects directly in Utheme Pro. Here's the concept behind the sticky parallax effects. First of all, add a section or a row which is multiple viewports high. This will define the duration of the parallax animation. Within this section or row, add a sticky column which has a height of one viewport. And finally, in this column, add elements that have the parallax effect. Since the column is sticky, the elements will not scroll out of the viewport, but will be animated while scrolling. Let's start the implementation with an actual example in Utheme Pro. Here, I want to create a sticky parallax effect with an image and two headlines. First, we need to set the section height. This will define the duration of our parallax animation. For example, let's set it to two viewports. To center the elements within the viewport, go to the row settings and set the height to one viewport. In the column settings, set the vertical alignment to middle. Next, let's make the column sticky within its section. Now our column which has a height of one viewport is sticky within the section which has a height of two viewports. And finally, you need to add elements with the parallax effects to the sticky column. Often, the main element is centered within the column, while others are positioned absolutely in the fore or background. So let's set the absolute position for both headline elements. Now to the parallax effect. In my case, I already added the parallax effect, so let's just enable it. Make sure to set the parallax target option to section so the animation starts and stops depending on the position of the section. By default, the animation starts when the section enters the viewport and stops when it has left the viewport. Optionally, you can set both start and end offsets to one viewport. This will start the animation once the section fully covers the viewport and end it when the section starts leaving the viewport. Now let's do the same for the headline elements. Now we have created a sticky parallax effect with an image in the center and two headlines in the background. Let's take a look at another example with a slightly different approach. Instead of a section, you can also use the row as a sticky container. Just set the row height manually in the advanced settings in the CSS field. Now, our row has a height of two viewports. If you have more than one sticky main element, you can use multiple sticky columns. In my case, I have five image elements in five different columns, so we need to make each column sticky within the row. Now, the first column sticks to the top of the viewport when scrolling down. As in the previous example, we want to center the sticky elements within the viewport. But instead of setting the height of a column and centering the elements within, the column can keep its height and we just offset the sticky position to center it in the viewport. You can offset the sticky position in pixels, percent, 
or viewport units and use basic mathematic operands plus and minus. So let's move the column's top border to the middle of the viewport by setting an offset of half a viewport and now subtract half of the column's height so it's perfectly positioned in the middle. Now our column becomes sticky when it's in the middle of the viewport. Now let's make other columns sticky as well. And all columns are sticky within the row. Finally, let's add the parallax effects to the image elements. As in the previous example, I have already added the parallax effect, so let's just enable it. Here, the target is a row, since we want the parallax effect to start and end depending on the position of the row. Now let me just set the parallax effect for the other elements. And now all our five columns are sticky within the row. Instead of setting a fixed height on a section or row, the height can be defined by elements of a column which is not sticky. In this example, my section does not have a fixed height, so let's make it longer by adding more headline elements. Let's make the second column sticky within the section. And finally, set the parallax effect for the image element. As you can see here, the duration of the parallax animation is defined by the number of elements added in the section. For the next example, let's create a sticky background effect. Here, you need a section with two rows. In the first row, we will set our sticky background, and in the second row, the content that will be animated on scrolling. First, let's add our background image or video in the column settings. Now, set its height to viewport. Since this column is only used for the background, it does not contain any elements. Now to the second row. Here we need to pull this row above the previous one using custom CSS. Let's also add the parallax effect to our headline. Since the content of the second row will define the duration of our animation, we need to add more headline elements. Make sure that their height is larger than the viewport so that the column can be sticky on scrolling. Now let's make our column with a background sticky within its section. Finally, depending on your background, you may want to change the text color to light.
And now we have created a sticky background effect, which looks like movie credits. You can also create a sticky parallax effect, where elements fade in and out, equally distributed along the animation sequence. Here you need to use the start and end offsets to give each element the same duration. Here's how you can do it. For example, let's create a parallax effect with two visual parts. Here is the first visual part. First of all, let's set the section height to two viewports. To center the elements within the viewport, go to the row settings and set the height to one viewport. In the column settings, set the vertical alignment to middle. Finally, make the column sticky within its section. The same applies to the second column. Now, our column which has a height of one viewport is sticky within a section which has a height of two viewports. Now to the parallax effects. Let's open the parallax settings of the first element. Here, I want to animate the opacity of the element. Since we want the animation to start once the section is fully visible, set the start offset to one viewport. Now to the end offset. There is a trick to make calculating offsets more easy. Just set the end offset to 100% plus one viewport, so the end of the animation is the same as its start. Now subtract the sum of the start offset and the duration. In our case, our section has a height of two viewports, and since the animation should start once the section is fully visible, there is only one viewport left for the whole duration of the animation. So if we have two visual parts, each part will be animated for half a viewport or 50 VH. This means the end would be 100% plus one viewport and minus one and a half viewports so half a viewport later, after the animation has started. Now, the panel element fades out during half of the animation sequence. To only fade it out shortly before the end, let's add another animation stop, and for example, let's fade it out after 80% of the animation. Now let's do the same for the image. Again, the start is one viewport and the end is 100% plus one viewport and minus one and a half viewport. And now to the second visual part. Let's copy the panel element and place it in the same position as the previous panel using absolute positioning. Here I also want the element to fade in at 20% and fade out at 80%. Now to the animation offset. Since we want the animation of the second element to start after the animation of the first element has ended, set the start to one and a half viewports. And since the animation should run for half a viewport, let's end it at two viewports. Let's do the same for the image. Again, let's change its position.
the parallax effect. And use the same starting and offset as for the second panel. Now the elements fade in and out one after another. If you want to add a third part with the same duration, we need to use a custom section height of 2.5 viewports. Let's remove the height of our section and set it with custom CSS. Now our section has a height of 2.5 viewports. Let's copy the panel again. Change the opacity so that the element does not fade out at the end. And modify the start and end offset by half a viewport again. So the animation will start after the animation of the second element has ended. And let's end the animation of the third element at 2.5 viewports. And finally, let's do the same for the third image. And now we have created a sticky parallax effect, where elements fade in and out one after another. To show you how easy it is to calculate offsets, let me show you another example. Let's extend the duration of our animation to three viewports. This can be set in the section settings, so let's remove custom CSS. Now to the parallax effects. If the section has a height of 3 viewports and the animation starts after the section has scrolled 100 VH into the viewport, there are 200 VH left for the whole duration of our animation. And since we have 3 animation parts, each part will be animated for 66.6 .6 repeated VH. So for the first element, the start offset is 100 VH. And what makes the calculation of the end offset so easy is that we first make the end of the animation the same as its start. Now just subtract the sum of the start offset and the duration. Here it's 166.6 .6 repeated VH. For the second element, you would start with the same value of 166.6 .6 repeated VH and end at 233.3 repeated VH. And lastly, the third element would start at 233.3 repeated VH and end at 300 VH. Now you know how to create sticky parallax effects directly in Youtheme Pro.